Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you today I'm setting up my new snail tank for the Baybrook Af African Land Snails. The tank they're in is too small um, and they do need to move to a bigger tank and I got one this size because this will mean this will last them for probably the rest of their lives, um, if not for quite a bit of it. Um, it's a fairly large tank, um, I'll have to show you from the side view at some point. First thing I've done is I've put in the substrate, which is cocoa fibre bark stuff that comes in like freeze dried blocks and then you have to soak it in water. And I've done it so it's fairly deep. It's like the depth of my finger. Um, you want it at least the depth of the shell of the snail so that they can burrow. I've done it a little bit deeper. Um, well, yeah, a little bit deeper because they are only small, but... I figure it will give them plenty of places to burrow. Um, I've got my water dish, um, which is plastic. This is not ceramic, like the other one I had. Oh, I've still got the label on it. Um, it's plastic, and it's a bit deeper than what I'd like. Um, I prefer something shallower. This is the only thing I've been able to find. So what I'm currently doing at the minute is filling it with some rocks. That way they can access the water, but they can't actually get in the bowl. So that's the whole idea of putting the rocks in. I've just got to get some more and put those in. I've got some knocking around that I've been using for a while. So that's been used in the old, the old tank. Um, it's just to stop them being able to get in and drown, really, because you know they're only little. But I figure if I fill it with rocks and fill it with water. They, they, can, they can sit on the rock and drink the water without getting in, so it'll help them. So I will put some more rocks in there. I've got a little bit of food. I've got some, this is some lettuce that I'm growing for them. It's, um, oh, what is it? I can't remember what the name is, but it's quite a long, narrow lettuce as opposed to like iceberg and stuff. You don't want to give them iceberg lettuce because it's got no nutritional value in it's literally just um, water whereas if you get the um, this the different types of lettuce there's like um, oh why can't I think what the name is I'll put the name on the screen if I remember what the name of the lettuce is that's the one I normally use um, I've got some little bits of cuttlefish I've got some more as well so I don't want to put um, massive amounts of cuttlefish in because it does take a while to get through it um so i don't want to stick a ton in because i find it goes a bit soft and weird um so they've got a little bit and i'm going to provide like places for them to hide and stuff like that so what i've got I've got my hydrometer and thermometer stuck on the side ready i've got my thermostat and my heat mat ready to go as well but i'll do them in a minute so first of all i've got plastic flower pots I find these are quite good they seem to quite like going in these um especially if i put a little bit of the substrate in it's somewhere for them to hide um somewhere for them to feel safe um i've got some moss as well that's going to go in here which will help maintain the humidity in here because they need it quite humid quite moist um but that's currently soaking so i'll be able to put that in in a minute so the next thing i'm going to do is put in I can get my gloves off, put my, um, get the thermostat and the heat mat set up. Now, the heat mat I've got oops, is this one. Ignore my tape on it. That's how I fixed it to the other tank. Um, so yeah, this is my heat mat that I've got and it'll do this size tank quite nicely and it's going to attach to the back there so I need to attach that you can watch the snails nibble while I do that and I'm going to use my where is my I've got some electrical tape that I'm going to use to stick that in place because my uh, other tapes, it keeps coming off. I could, I suppose, if I was careful, maybe hot glue it, but 
I'm worried about damaging the elements in the um, heat mat, so that's not going to work. So I need to tape it. And all I'm going to do is not where the heating element is, obviously, but around the edge. Let's apply my bit of tape and attach that to the tank. So if you look, you've got like where the heating elements are and then you've got this like edge to it, which is just the coating. That's where I can safely put my tape without causing a problem with heat or damaging the um, mat. Not the prettiest way to attach this, but it does the job. So I'll stick that on around about, around about there. And I did have a thermostat before, but I broke it. But I've got a new thermostat now. So all I've been doing up to now is I'll put the heat mat on and then just keep knowing it. <laughs> and then turn it off. Um, you know if it gets too warm or overnight but because my house has been quite warm it's been it's been maintaining the temperature at their ideal temperature anyway so it's been fine the thermostat i've got is this one the microclimate ministat 100 and i've set it to 22 degrees fahrenheit which is 72 celsius yeah, I think. Anyway, it's it's where it says 72 or it's 22. So 22 degrees C and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so there you go. So what I've done is I've put some of the moss in. This is, sorry about the shaky camera. Um, this is sphagnum moss. And this helps to maintain the humidity in the tank. And it also gives them something to hide under and around um, as you can see there's one of the hides I've set up which is a plastic flower pot um, with a bit of the substrate inside it's nice and dark in there um, so they can hide and also there's the other one so they've got two hiding spots and at the minute Theodore and Alvin have opted to go underneath the lettuce leaf but there's Simon he's going to explore and have a look around um they've got cuttlefish in there they've got their food they've got some water as you can see i've only filled the water to a shallow depth and also it's full of stone so they can't actually drown in it so they can stand on a rock and sip water and wh wherever they stand on the rock it's only going to be like what two millimeters deep max so it's just to make sure that they're nice and safe in the water so that's their water dish as you can see so they're not going to go you know they're not going to go under the water oh can't tell if simon's trying to climb the moss or if he's investigating whether he eat it um so yeah so there's one hide there's the other one I'll try and get some better shots of it because obviously um, the sun's shining on it at the minute. So this is their tank all done. You'll have to excuse the uh, handheld shot. Um, my thing that my camera goes on is by my desk and I'm on the other side of the room. So they're all hiding now. Um, I've got two of them. Oh, by the roof one's there the other one's there the other one is underneath that lettuce leaf at the front um, if you look there he is that's Alvin he likes to be by food he hides by food so um, I've got them all set up now as you can see you've got a, a plant pot there and a plant pot there both made out of plastic so don't worry if they fell from the roof of the tank it won't hurt them because it's a soft plastic um, their food dish is also plastic even though it looks like one of those ceramic -y ones it is i promise you plastic it's just the same color as the ceramic 
Um, I've put some rocks in and a little bit of water because obviously you don't want too much water in that they're going to drown. This um, dish is a bit deeper than what I'd like um, but with the rocks in so there's plenty of rocks so they can't get in between the rocks or anything um, you know so they'll have to stand on a rock to drink so it'll be fine and that'll prevent them from drowning that's what I've done before when they were tiny babies um, they've got their food they've got plenty of sphagnum moss which helps keep the moisture in the tank they have a nice deep layer of substrate that they can burrow into you want the substrate to be at least the depth of their shell um, and Rick is, and not Rick Alvin is his shells about up to this took to there from the tip of my finger to there so I just made sure I could get up to there in the soil and a bit further so I've actually done a bit extra as you can see it's about it's about one and a half Alvin's deep basically the substrate because he's the biggest one so I've gone by him um, I've got my thermostat set up there's the um, sensor which goes into the tank and it hangs around about that level because you want it hanging around in the air and it will measure the air temperature if I fastened it to the back of the tank it will be on the wall where the um, heat mat is that's all it's doing is measuring the, the heat of the heat mat I need it to actually measure the air temperature in the tank I may lower it a bit down I don't know um, but for now it seems to be working fine so the thermostat's all set up and it's all down it's all down there so I've got easy access to the controls so I can turn it up and down if I need to um, the ideal temperature to keep them at is 20 to 25 degrees Celsius um, that's 70 to something in Fahrenheit I think um, I'm not sure but it's easy to convert with Google um, but yeah 20 to 25 uh, degrees centigrade which is what we use in the UK to measure temperature is the ideal temperature to keep the tank at I usually keep mine at around about 22 and I seem to, that seems to do fine for all my snails and Rick my big snail my eldest snail he prefers 22 if it's any lower than 22 you won't see him and if it's much higher than 22 you won't see him for some reason Rick prefers the ideal temperature of 22 and that's his temperature otherwise he hides so yeah 22 is what I keep them at and they seem happy at that and, and active enough um you need to make sure so what you need is your heat mat which is suitable for the size tank it says on the packaging the size the tank it will warm up um, so you can get the right size mat um, mine's a slightly smaller mat but obviously it's a slightly smaller tank so but it works fine this tank is um, mm, about a foot and a half wide and about a foot tall um, and this will keep them going for quite a few years um, it takes them a while to get to the massive size um, and yeah I found this size tank will be fine for them um, I mean put it this way Rick's still in a tank this size so they'll be fine because Rick's fairly big um, Rick doesn't do a lot of moving either so he doesn't really need a lot of room but he's he's all right he's over there he's over the other side of the room um so you need a tank that they're, they're big enough to grow into um don't get them a massive giant one like this straight off unless you're just going to do one purchase and be done sort of thing for a few years i started them off i had a version of this tank which was about a quarter of the size of this and that's kept them fine for like the first year um you could even probably keep them in there for the first two um but then you'll see if they start to have to climb over each other to get anywhere basically they have got enough room and you need if you want to have a rough idea of how much room you need basically if you've got enough room for the snails a pile of food some cuttlefish bone a water dish some moss and somewhere for them to hide you've got enough space for them for now um, if they have to start climbing over each other to get at stuff that's when you're starting to run out of room if you can't fit a water bowl the food and the moss in you ain't got enough space and you need a bigger room but when they're tiny babies it's okay to do have small the smaller room um, that way they can just focus on reaching the food eating and growing and putting on weight um, when they're a bit bigger they need a bit more room to roam around i've found um, you need to provide 
some leaf litter or some sphagnum moss you can buy sphagnum moss in nice big bags it's live sphagnum moss by the way um, in nice big bags from the pet shop you just have to soak it for half an hour before you put it into the tank um, and you need to provide somewhere for them to hide so I, I use these plastic um, flower pots which have been fully cleaned um, and to clean them just used nice warm water don't use any soaps or anything to clean them um, it's bad for the snails just some nice warm water will clean out clean out the pots fine a uh, bit of hot water well you have to be careful if it's boiling water you're going to melt your plant pots but if it's fairly hot water it will clean them fine um for them to hide in a water dish i recommend a water dish and so does the rspca and somewhere else i read as well um i've always had a water dish and i found that the love it i find sometimes the snails will just sit in there um quite happily in the water i think they use it to cool off a bit as well as to drink and I've, I've watched a snail sit there drinking so they do use a water bowl you can they can get a lot of moisture from their food but i find it's best to provide a little water dish so if they want it they can have it i'd rather have it and them not need it than need it and not have it put it that way and i've found my snails do a lot better since having water dishes in their tanks because when i first had them years ago i never used to put a water dish in i found they're a lot better they're a lot more hydrated with a little water dish this one's a little bit too deep for, for what i'd like i'd prefer something shallower but i can't get anything at the minute um so i've just put some rocks that i've cleaned out the garden in there um and that's for the snails to stand on so they can still reach the water without having to go in it and risk drowning because you do have to be careful they're not going to drown um when they're babies um you what else did i mention so yeah so the substrate needs to be a shot about a shot and a half deep of the biggest snail you have in the tank keep them in twos or threes provide them with plenty of sphagnum moss couple of places to hide varied foods water dish thermostat heat mat keep them at 20, 20 to 25 degrees centigrade um they will eat a variety of things they'll eat this like leafy greens so like this is a lettuce that i'm growing for them it's not iceberg don't give them iceberg lettuce iceberg lettuce is no good um it basically just it's just water um it provides apparently it provides no nutritional value for them so i give them regular lettuce it's like the sort of more narrow crinkly leaves lettuce that i give them and i've got one i'm growing for them on my kitchen windowsill so that's what that is um cucumber is one of them where all snails love cucumber that i've found if you put cucumber in the tank i've found they will eat that and ignore a lot of the other foods so i put that in every so often so they get some really nice like a lot of moisture on board um because i use it like basically it's like water for them and then i'll take it out and then for the rest of the uh, week they only have their leafy greens and whatever um that way they'll eat a variety of foods if you start off just feeding your snails cucumber they'll only want that um they it's like they're addicted to it they absolutely adore cucumber um but they'll they'll eat it instead of everything else uh foods you can give them you can give them um sweet potato you can give them dandelion leaves just make sure there's no like chemicals or sprays or anything on them um leafy greens i've used lettuce and you know those like bags of mixed salad which i always call fake lettuce it's like the i just call it bitter leaves it's like um you get the back salad bags and it's got all the different leafy things in i think it's like rocket and stuff in there um i sometimes give them that they've had pea shoots which they quite liked um they can eat banana um apple um grated carrot which they these these lots seem to quite like my other snails didn't like grated carrot but these do um you can give them a bit of pear and stuff but i've never found these particularly bothered by pear um they like banana um and there's like a whole bunch of foods if you go you, you have to google it for a whole this i used to have like a, a pamphlet thing i was given the ones that had like a list of like everything you can eat that can feed them um but i can't find it i've got it knocking around somewhere it's probably on one of my old videos actually i'll uh, have a look so yeah there is quite a wide range of foods they can eat you can give them some you know the goldfish flake food if you put some of that in some water you can feed them that every so often 
um, you can give them eggshell for the calcium for their shells or cuttlefish. I prefer cuttlefish because I think eggshells are a bit sharp, but you can give them eggshell and cuttlefish. You can get the like, calcium powder to sprinkle on the food, but I'm never so sure about that. Um, I've found cuttlefish works perfectly well. Plus, it's not plastered on everything. Like, if they want the calcium, they can eat it. If they don't, they don't. You know what I mean? Like, they can pick and choose when they eat it. And they do quite well with the cuttlefish. Um, the last piece of cuttlefish I put, I put, I put in, I can't even find a trace of it. They've eaten the lot. So, that's why I put in small amounts at a time. There's like three pieces there. Um, the little ones need plenty. Um, but what I, the reason I don't put a big piece in, because my pieces come... And they'd be, if I put a whole piece in that I buy, it'd go from about there to about there, it'd fill up like about, about a quarter of the base of the tank. But I find after so long, it starts to get a bit moist and a bit weird um, once it gets moist. Um, I find it's better to break off a bit, let them eat that, and as that starts to go down, I'll put another bit in. So they, they always have it, it's always available. It must always be available. Um, don't give your snails um, starchy foods like pasta or bread and certainly don't give them anything containing salt because it's it's not it's going to kill them it's not good you need to like really make sure your stuff salt free um, like I said cuttlefish bones good um, they can eat dog biscuits apparently as well I've not tried that with mine um, I think you soak them in water a bit, but yeah, apparently they can eat dog biscuits. Um, lifespan wise, these ones will do three to five years. They can get up to nine years. Um, I had one that did nine. Most of mine do five years. Um, these ones are about a year old, roughly, something like that. Um, so yeah, so you do need to be prepared. You're going to be looking after them for a few years. They're not just like a one year thing. It's like, it's going to be a minimum of like three to five years. Um, so you need to make sure you've got space for them. You need to make sure you can afford to look after them and you need to put the time in. Um, I may have missed something else out. I can't think off the top of my head, but basically these have got now everything they're going to need. They've got a heat source with the heat mat that's controlled by a thermostat so it's not going to get too hot. It's going to maintain that nice steady temperature for them. They've got plenty of sphagnum moss which will keep the moisture in the tank, help with the humidity levels because they need the nice level of humidity. Um, they've got places to hide. They've got loads of substrate so they can burrow underneath. They've got plenty of food. Um, this is just what I've put in for now but this will change. I change it every day so this will change tomorrow. And I'll, there'll be some other things. Oh, another food that they've seen, they seem to like is blueberries. Um, not all of them. I found some of them like blueberries, some of them don't. Um, but again, that's not something I put in all the while. Um, cucumbers, like one I do once a week. Um, water. And yeah, Bob Shunker, they're, they're fine. Quite happy. Um, cleaning wise, I will cl next clean this tank probably be a couple of weeks at least i don't i find with the snails less is more with the cleaning like wipe the inside of the glass if they get like poop on the glass and stuff and obviously wipe off the snail trails which i'll do every week but actually changing the substrate i do about once a month while they're small um when they're bigger i do it more often you can just tell when it's a bit too soggy and a bit too icky with poop um, so basically when it starts to look soggy is when I change it um, and yeah I think that's all I can think of to talk about with them so they're all set up now I've got I'll show you where they've gone now the sun is shining just on the right spot on my bay window right there you go so if you look One is just there by the thermometer and hydrometer. So that is Theodore is by the thermometer hydrometer. Alvin has decided to hide underneath the lettuce leaf. And Simon 
Where have you gone, Simon? Can't see you anymore. Simon was on the roof. Simon's moved. Uh, Simon's... Simon's down the back in the moss somewhere. They're quite good at hiding, um, so don't be surprised if you can't find them. Um, make sure as well when you buy a um, tank for them, by the way, see how... I need to open the window now. Open the curtain. See... Yeah. Right, see how the gaps there are fairly small? Basically, you don't want any gaps any bigger than that because if they get if they lay any eggs and you've missed them and you end up with a baby snail, they'll get out of anything bigger than that. So that's about the biggest you're going to want it to be, which is about five millimeters max, probably about three millimeters. Um, so yeah, so you don't want any large gaps. Um, Obviously, if I left the lid open, you'll probably find the snails will be out in the morning. I had it the once where the old tank I'd got, the lid, you could pop it off if you pushed, if the snails pushed hard enough. They could open the lid, like the sort of door thing, because the catch was broke. And I did have it the one morning a few years back with the old snails I had. They were like full size. They were all the size of my hand. And one of them had managed to push his way through and lift up the lid like that. And I found one halfway up the, up the wall one behind a set of, of drawers and the other one was on the carpet in front of the set of drawers so they do escape quite well if you're not careful so make sure that there's no gaps that they can get out of these are all bigger than the gaps so they'll be fine um oh yeah thing is as well is with breeding if you obviously keep more than one snail in your tank they are going to lay eggs. Um, mine haven't laid eggs yet. Uh, they're only young. Um, they may lay eggs for the first time this year. If not, they will next year. Um, I can't remember how old mine were when they started laying eggs. And I find they normally do two batches in the summer months. Um, and it's a lot of eggs. Um, I think the like it's got to be about 100, 200 eggs. It's a fair few eggs that they lay um, and I've found that mine normally do two batches in the summer months so like the summer holidays like July, August is normally when I find its peak egg laying season. Um, like I said these are only young so I don't think they're quite old enough to lay eggs yet um, or at least they haven't yet but do check weekly for eggs. The easiest way I've found to check is you lift up the tank and look underneath the substrates because I find they put it right at the bottom near the base of the tank so I find that when you lift the tank up you'll see the clutches of eggs um, underneath the soil underneath the substrate and all you do is you take the eggs out if you're not breeding them obviously um, take the eggs out put them in a food bag and put and put them in another food bag Make sure it's nice and securely tied and everything and then you put them in the freezer for 48 hours and that kills off the eggs before they have a chance to develop into anything, before they have the chance to hatch or anything and it kills off the eggs and then you throw them in the bin. Do not release African land snails into the wild. In the UK it's legal to keep them as pets but it is illegal to release them or their eggs. So if you put them or their eggs in your garden, you're breaking the law. But in the UK, if they're in a tank and you're looking after them in your house, they are legal to keep as a pet. They are an invasive species, hence the reason why we can't release them into the wild because they will decimate the natural snail population and just, you know, destroy crops and stuff, especially if it's a warm environment. In this country, they'd probably die in the winter pretty much anyway but either way we're not allowed to release them some countries they are illegal um i think in the states or at least certain parts of america like certain states in america they are most definitely illegal and you can't keep them as a pet um i don't know if that's the same for all states and i know some countries you can't keep them as pets in africa i mean in africa they're in the back gardens roaming around so that you know certain countries have got them anyway but uh, you do need to check your local laws um, and make sure it's legal for you to keep them if you're thinking of having African land snails as pets 
I've checked and UK is perfectly fine with it. As long as you don't release them into the wild, you're fine. Um, and you can have them as a pet. Um, so yeah, that's all I can think of. If I've missed anything, let me know. Um, thank you as well to the people in the past who have um, given me information and helped me to develop my knowledge on caring for African land snails. Um, I wouldn't say I was the most... I wasn't a, a really naive owner when I first started having them. I knew some things about them. Um, but obviously over the years I've gained more information like about ideal temperatures, um, how to maintain moisture levels, the wider variety of foods I can give them, that sort of thing. Um, and you can read up about like diseases and things that can affect them, um, what they should and shouldn't come into contact with. So for example, when I clean this tank, I will not use any form of cleaning solution whatsoever. I will use only plain water. And what I tend to do is, if I was doing like a thorough clean and I needed to scrub the tank and empty everything out, I'd use hot water. Otherwise, to wipe off slime trails off the inside of the tank or any little poop trails that might have got on the um, inside of the tank, I just get a piece of kitchen roll, um, fold it up a few times, put some warm water on it, use that to clean the tank. I don't use any chemicals whatsoever. If you use soaps and bleaches and stuff, it's going to absorb into their skin and kill them. It's, it's going to make them really ill. So plain water only to wash the tank. Um, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video of me doing my new snail tank setup. And I've got them on here next to my ficus plant which is currently recovering. It was in the windowsill and didn't like it and fell out of me. But it's growing all its new baby leaves now. So it's getting in there. It's better than it was. Um, so they're going to live there. And if it's like a really sunny day, I'll just keep my curtains shut. Especially the side that shines on the tank. Um, they don't like direct sunlight, so don't keep them in a window or anything. So obviously these are not like my windows over here. My well, window's over there, so keep them away from direct sunlight, keep them nice and warm, um, and yeah, you will have happy, healthy snails that will live a long time. Like I said, most of mine have always done about five years, and I did have one that did nine years. The one that did nine years, the shell ended up being the size of my entire hand. Um, he was massive, and he lived in an old fish tank. And in case you're wondering where my old fish tank setup's gone, I broke it. So, yep, that's why we've changed the system. Um, I used to have an old fish tank, which was like three foot by one and a half foot or three foot by two foot, something like that, size wise. But yeah, it broke, so can't keep them in there anymore. The glass broke, so there was a risk of them cutting themselves on the glass and stuff. So. And the, so it didn't have a lid or anything anymore and yeah it wasn't good so I binned it because it wasn't suitable as a fish tank for years anyway because it it was like breaking down where all the seals were and stuff on the outside so it was going to leak um, but yeah I've gotten these plastic ones instead I found these plastic ones seem to be a bit more hard wearing and I like this these Komodo ones they seem pretty good I'm not sponsored or anything by the way it's just these seem pretty good you can get cheaper versions like the one one rick's in because it rick's over there at the minute because i'm off i'm part way through cleaning him out rick's in like the cheaper version that's the old one the babies was in as you can see it was tiny but obviously i meant to replace this tank in march but then we had lockdown and i couldn't get access to stuff um but yeah so there's rick in rick's is in there um and yeah i find these tanks are pretty good so yeah that's it if you want to ask me any questions let me know if you have any suggestions let me know i'm always welcome to people suggesting things that i can do to help look after my african land snails i mean i'm not saying i know everything um so if i forgot something let me know all i ask is that you be respectful and tell me in a nice way i've seen other snail keepers where they've done stuff wrong and people have got really had a go at them um and that's not the way to educate people the way if you want to educate someone on a topic don't have a go at them and tell them it's wrong what you do is you advise them in a nice way like you say well you 
I can see you've done that. However, it is best if you do blah, blah, blah. You know, advise them in a nice way. Be nice, be kind. Choose kind is what we would say at work. Choose kind. Um, so yeah, I'm quite willing, quite open and willing to suggestions. Um, this is not their forever tank. Um, if they need a bigger one, depending on how big they go, they'll get a bigger one. Um, this is the one I've got for now, because this is what I could get. This is plenty big for them at the minute, because I mean, like I said, um, Alvin's shell, Alvin's the biggest one. He's only the length of two sections of my index finger. So, I mean, he's all right. You know, this is big enough for now. Um, once they get full size, so they're like, you know, the size of my hand, then obviously they'll have a lot bigger space, which is fine. I can get one. Um, but that'll probably be a fish tank, I should imagine. We'll see. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Any questions, feel free to ask me. And yeah, bye for now.